Okay, welcome everyone to um, another random walk down uh, Mill Street. Tonight's topic is Eight Ratzon um, uh, and some two unusual prayers on Shabbat Mincha. And we want to thank uh, this week's uh, session sponsor, Diane Sandoval. I see you here. Thank you very much for sponsoring this week's session. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to share my screen. This should not be a particularly long uh, session. If you have to be somewhere, I think we'll probably be around 35 minutes. We'll see. I've been wrong before. So we'll see. <laughs> okay. Uh, here we go. Okie doke. All right. Um, so the topic for this week's uh, uh, session is two prayers that occur in Shabbat Mincha, uh, and only uh, at Shabbat Mincha, which is uh, you know they're they're unique. They come every week, but they only appear in Shabbat Mincha. They don't appear at other times in our prayer book. And those two prayers are Va'ani Tefilati Lecha Adonai Eit Ratzon and Tzidkat Tzachat Tzedek. So we're going to talk about those two and why we say them uh, and, and we'll listen to the, the new stuff uh, as well. So uh, starting with Va'ani Tefilati. So Shabbat Mincha begins like any other day at Mincha. Uh, we sing uh, 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 um, um, yeah, we sing the, the, the opening psalm of Mincha. We sing we sing Asher, we sing Uvalatzion, and then we say a Kaddish, and then we take out the Torah. But before we take out the Torah, we say this verse: "Vani tefilati lecha Adonai et raton Elohim berob chastecha naneni beemet yishnecha." It is a verse from Tehillim, from a psalm that we don't say very frequently. Um, I think it's sixty-nine, and. Uh, and we say, we chant it twice. The Chazan says it, the congregation then chants it after him. The Chazan says it a second time. And then the, it is chanted again by the congregation. And then we take out the Torah. In Ashkenazic synagogues, they say this phrase as well. They say this verse as well, but only one time. Uh, and apparently in, in Italian synagogues, or at least it formerly was, or maybe it still is. I don't know if anyone knows, you can put it in the chat. Uh, it used to be said three times. Or maybe still is done in, in Rome. I don't know. But um, the Italian customs say the verse three times. Um, I, there is much written about the number of times it's said. That's not my focus for today. Uh, if you're interested, you can contact me uh, separately. Um, but before we talk about what this prayer is and what, why we say it, um, let's listen to it. So first, we'll listen to uh, the way we sing it here in New York from a recording of uh, our late great Chazan, uh, Abraham Lopez Cardoz. And when you when I play it, someone tell me if you can hear it well or not. Whoops, no, wrong thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So that said two times. It's a nice little melody, and it's only here. Um, I was trying to talk to her, I wrote earlier, to think if it has any other cognates or if it's related to anything else, but we couldn't really think of anything in particular that it was connected to. So it's its own own little standalone melody, a standalone prayer. Um, in Amsterdam, it sounds a little different, uh, and I'll play it for you here. This is a recording from Chazan Nabarro, the, the former Chazan uh, after World War II in Amsterdam. <laughs> So you see it. Now that's a little different than the way we sing it, except maybe at the very end. But the, 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 it doesn't follow the same 
elaborate melody that we do. Uh, but in London, we're basically here in New York, we're singing the same melody they do in London. But in London, they sing, uh, sing it like uh, at half the speed that we sing it here in New York. And here is a recording of Chafon Ben Arosh, the late Chazan of London. Then the qua then the congregation, then the chazan again, then the congregation. So a chunk of time right there. <laughs> All right, that's the melody. Now uh, I did, and I will refer you back. I'm not going to play it for you now, but I will refer you back to um, the uh, the session I did about Shabbat Mincha way back in February, uh, where we played a recording of this that was uh, composed by uh, the choir master in Livorno in Ventura. Uh, which is elaborate and sung by the choir and, and with organ accompaniment. And I asked then, and I don't have a good answer now, whether there was a choir and organ accompaniment on Shabbat Mincha, because that would be very unusual here in New York, where Shabbat Mincha is not all that well attended, and there's no choir, and we go pretty quickly through it. And you don't say this little prayer on Yom Tov, and you don't say it at any other holiday. You only say it on Shabbat Mincha. So I... I'm curious to know when they would have sung that elaborate uh, choral piece, uh, or maybe it's just concerts. I don't know, but we'll have to ask someone who's from Livorno. Anyway, um, that is Vani Tefilati and the Nusach of how we say it. Uh, but let's talk about what the prayer is. So it's a verse, and it's a verse that says uh, it's it's in the voice of David, um, and David says Vani uh, as for me. Tefilati, my prayer, lecha Adonai, is to you, eight ratzon, in an acceptable time. But exactly what that means is, you know, in an appropriate time, in a time that God will accept my, my prayers. Elohim, berob chasdecha, God, in his abundant mercy, um, aneni, will answer me, be'emet yishnecha, with the truth of his salvation, or something like that, your saving truth, his saving truth, um, and it's in a long, a pretty long psalm, where uh, David talks about um, being ridiculed and scorned, and uh, and how he keeps the faith, and God will save him. Uh, it is a, it's not a happy psalm until the very end when it talks about God saving him, but a lot of it is about it's sort of one of these psalms that might be appropriate for. Uh, Kippur, Rosh Hashanah, or Silichot, it's he's supplicating to God, asking for God to forgive him and to and to hear his prayer. And that comes out just a little bit in this verse. <clears throat> now, why are we saying it here is pretty much a mystery, um, but I'll show you what the sources say. So uh, let's go on to the next slide. Let's take a look on the left here. You'll see it says uh, tour. This is uh, the tour is uh, um, uh, one of the uh, early codifiers of uh, of halacha. Um, he uh, moved from Ashkenaz to Sepharad um, in, I guess, around the 13th century or so. Um, and so he says pretty short. He has a short explanation. It says Seder Mincha. The order of the prayers of the afternoon Shabbat are. Omer uh, Shliach Tzibar Ashrei, the, the, the Chazan says Ashrei, Ubal Etzion, and Kaddish. And then he says, Ve'omer Pasuk Vani Tefilati Lecha Adonai Yedratzon. That's the verse we're talking about. Why? Al Pi HaMidrash, Yasichu Bi Yoshevei Sha'ar V'niginot V'niginot Shotei Shachar. Uh, there is a midrash that quotes the verse right before Vani Tefilati in that psalm. The preceding verse says, um, they speak about me, those who are sitting in the uh, uh, gates of the city, and, they, and, and the songs uh, pr 
presumably ridic ridiculing David of those who are getting drinking themselves drunk. And then it says, Vani, but I, Tfilati uh, and I That's in the psalm itself. And Viktiv in the Midrash says there, Vani Tfilati Lachad and I Rason, Amar David says David to, to the Lord, Ribono Shalam, Af Api Shashatinu, Vani Tfilati Lecha Adonai. Even though we have drunk, that's the way it says there, and this, this is a, not a perfect quote of the Midrash, by the way, even though we have drunk, I, Say my prayers to the Lord. Does that do you now understand why we say that Bencha? Does that make perfect sense to everyone? Uh, it doesn't to me. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, thank you to the Torah. Yaakov ben Arash ben Asher. Um, so uh, a little this same explanation is given a little more. Full, uh, fullness in the Sidur of Rashi, or the Sidur attributed to Rashi, probably written by one of Rashi's students. Uh, so um, I will read it here. And that's on the right. This is why we uh, say this verse, Ani Tfilati. It's written above in that psalm, in that same psalm. It's written, They speak about me. Uh, the uh, those who are sitting in the in the gates of the city, the neginot shotei shachar and the and their songs and, uh, of the drunk of the drunk people. Again, this is in the psalm itself. Uh, David is saying uh, that he is being ridiculed by the people, and they're making up songs about him, and they're talking about him. And then it says our verse: I need to feel ati lechaz and I dress. This is a more full explanation compared to what the tour quoted in short. So says David to the Lord, the, the, the nations of the world, the Gentiles, essentially. Uh, they, on their holidays and on their festivals, they drink and get drunk and make merry in their uh, taverns all day. Kol hayom. And they don't mention your name. They don't remember your name, God. Avalani, but I, King David, lokein. Keshu higdalta ha-simcha li-Yisrael uba yom menucha ve-simchati. When the uh, joy of Israel is great, and comes our day of rest and rejoicing and joy. Uh, after I have partaken and I've, I've, I've uh, satisfied myself and enjoyed myself, uh, I, uh, I didn't forget. I didn't forget you. God, when the time for prayers come, I separate myself from the house of uh, partying, the uh, kofet and I uh, run and I jump to my uh, prayers ratzon in the appropriate time and in a time of that they'll be accepted and in a set time, the time for mincha. And I give praise uh, for my uh, portion. That's the Mishnah. And so says Rashi, or the Sidur Rashi, so therefore we have the custom to say this verse, that Mincha on Shabbat. Do you understand more now? Maybe a little bit, but he doesn't really say it perfectly clearly. But the idea is that on Shabbat, we have meals. We have special, joyful meals. And we drink. Um, and unlike others who drink and don't remember to go back to synagogue, we go back to synagogue. And so we say this verse. Now, I don't know about you, but that explanation doesn't really feel so perfect for me. Um, but that's what it says. That's the traditional explanation uh, for for why uh, we say Vani Tefilati Lecha Adonai Ratzon. There are other sources that uh, 
flesh this out and, and uh, talk about it uh, on end and talk about the time of the service uh, that in the, they used to have mincha earlier. Now, you know, not like what we do here at Shabbat Israel, where we say mincha right before our beat at the end of the day, but they would say mincha earlier, right after the meal of lunch, and then the same mincha, and then go and have sudash sheep and then have our beat. And so there's a lot of eating and rejoicing. And but in the middle of that eating and rejoicing, we have this this uh, this verse, and this verse has this strange. Uh, midrash on it about um, juxtaposing David to uh, those who are drunkards, and but David goes to pray, and so we say this this verse. Um, let's see what the chat say here. Oh, I, I believe it's chapter sixty nine, Psalm of Tet. Uh, but someone will go look it up while I'm talking. <laughs> okay. Um, now, I think there is another explanation, but to understand it, we have to understand that when we read, why are we reading Torah on Shabbat afternoon at all? And for that, you have to look in the Talmud and Baba Kama, uh, where it says, uh, it's talking, there's a long list of things that Ezra HaSofer, the biblical Ezra the scribe, uh, in initiated, was Mitaken, uh, he uh, ordained, or however you want to translate that. Um, and one of those Takanot, is to read Torah on Shabbat afternoon. It says, it says there's a list of them. Asara takanot tikein Ezra, shekorin b'mincha b'shabbat, that you read Torah on Shabbat b'mincha, v'korin b'sheni v'chamishi, and they read Torah on Monday and Thursday, v'danin b'sheni v'chamishi, and the and the Beit Din would uh, adjudicate on Mondays and Thursdays as well. And then there's a long list of other things, uh, seven other things uh, that are not relevant for tonight. Um, and then it, then the Gomara asks, how you korin de mincha? Um, and why did Ezra uh, ordain that they should read Torah on the afternoon of Shabbat? Mishum yoshevei kranot. Because of those who dwell in the corners. That's yoshevei kranot. That's literally what it means, yoshevei kranot. Uh, Rashi there says, what is Yoshevei Kranot, so those who dwell in the corners? He says, Yoshevei Chaniot, Kol Yimot Chol Oskin B'Schora, Ve'en Korin B'Shenim B'Chemishu. These are talking about uh, businessmen who uh, who have to go to work, who have to go to their stores. They are shopkeepers, um, and they have to go to their stores, and they, they can't go to synagogue on Monday and Thursday to hear Torah. And so Ezra was mitzakein that they should read Torah also on Shabbat afternoon for those people who can't make it on Monday and Thursday. Why? Uh, why is that important? I don't know. We just read we read Torah on Shabbat morning. Why do we have to read on Shabbat afternoon for those who can't make it on Monday and Thursday? Um, so that's a little bit more involved. But I'll tell you, uh, there's a Tosafot there um, that explains that. Uh, it's connected to this idea of eight ratzon, that when you read the Torah, uh, it is an eight ratzon. And um, um, let's see how I can explain more. So, um, so the idea is that uh, you, you, ha you want to uh, give the opportunity to the, um, the shopkeepers to hear the Torah that they would not otherwise get to hear. Why? Because that is the time when prayers are accepted. Meaning if they miss out on Monday and Thursday, God won't be able to accept their prayers. Pray prayers are accepted at particular times. Eight ratzon. Not any time. Not just any time. Can't just pray to God and he'll automatically accept it only at certain times. One of those times is when you read Torah, and so it gives a special uh, uh, time for the those who can't make it on Monday and Thursday to go on Saturday afternoon. That is uh, the Tosafot. Thank you, Dina. <coughs> um, now, uh, that that explanation is not given in full, but I believe that the that this leads us to the real reason, or at least another explanation for why we say this first. 
And that is because on Monday and Thursday, there is an introduction to the Torah. Before we take out the Torah, we say this, these two uh, paragraphs, El Erech HaPayim V'Rav Chesed V'Emet, Al Biapecha Tochichenu, Chusa Adonai Al Yisrael Amecha, V'Hoshienu Mikora, Chatanu Lecha Adon Selachna, Kerov Rachamecha El. Um, and this is a uh, supplication. This is like uh, what we say uh, on Kippur. Um, God, long-suffering and abundant in mercy, Rav Chesed Ve'emet, rebuke us not in thine anger, al b'yapachat ochechenu, chusa Adonai al Yisrael amecha, have pity on your people Israel, hoshienu mikoran, save us from evil, uh, even though we have sinned against you, chatanu lecha adon, Master, Shalachna, forgive us, Kerob Rachamecha El, in keeping with uh, your your abundant uh, uh, mercy. Uh, and it's a personal prayer. Uh, and so what I'm trying to bring out here is that on Monday and on Thursday, there is a connection between personal prayers and the Torah reading. And in fact, we have it on Shabbat too, not as much in our Spanish Portuguese tradition, but in other traditions where you have Brich Shemei or Av uh, These are prayers that are said before taking out the Torah and they have personal requests in them for God to forgive, for God to, to, to their, their personal requests. Something that we don't do on Shabbat otherwise, or at least not in the prayers of Shabbat otherwise. We don't make personal requests. In fact, we take the whole middle section of the Amidah out and we replace it with things that are appropriate for Shabbat and we don't make personal requests on Shabbat but when we read Torah we do um, and so I believe uh, with and I didn't find any good sources leading to this this is uh but I believe that the that the uh, the explanation of why we read Torah and the fact that reading Torah has this eight ratzon element uh, that has to do with uh, and that it makes prayers appropriate for that is why we say this verse on Shabbat. We cannot read the Yudgil Midot. We cannot say the Vidoy El Erech Apayim on Shabbat because that's not an appropriate prayer, prayer for Shabbat. That's a whole nother lecture in, in another day. But we don't make we don't say Vidoy. We don't do confessional on Shabbat. But we do make personal prayers. And so therefore, I think that is why we uh, say this verse. Let me go back uh, to the first uh, page here. Why is the Hebrew not coming up? That's unusual. As for me, my prayer should be in, a, in an acceptable time to you. Adonai, berov chastecha. In your abundant mercy, Aneni, answer me, Be'emet Ish Echa, and with the truth of your salvation, your saving, your saving truth, your, the truth of your salvation. So it's, uh, I think it's serving the same function as El Erech uh, It is telling the those attending services that now is the time to make personal prayer. And in fact, in Sharet Israel, we have that explicitly because. Before we close the ark, the time for personal prayers are when the Torah comes out and when it's returned before we close the ark. So people get called to the Torah and they make personal prayers after their aliyah, the hagomel, for example, example, or other things like that. Or when we return the Torah before we close it, people will go up to the front and make an offering. Those are personal prayers. And so vani tefilati lecha adonai et ratzon is telling the congregation. Now is the time, not during the Amidah, you couldn't do it then, but now you can make personal prayers. And I think that's, that's my explanation, take it or leave it. Hope you like it. Um, and Psalm 68, which I didn't look at, thank you, Dina, uh, is said before taking out the Torah. That's interesting. Uh, that's very interesting. Okay, we'll have to look, examine that for the next time we do this class. Uh, that sounds like it would fit in well. Okay, moving right along. The next unusual prayer um, for Shabbat afternoon, and that prayer is Tikatecha. So after we read the Torah, uh, we say the Amidah, 
And then we say these three verses. Ashkenazim say these same three verses in reverse. And Dina, I'm sorry, these come from three different Psalms. I do not have them. I should have put it, uh, the sources in here. I don't have them. Uh, the Sephardic way uh, that we read it here in Sharath Israel, in this order of these three verses, follows the order of Tanakh, meaning the earlier there, you know, the, the earlier it appears comes first, the middle one comes middle, and the last time this this verse comes last in the order of Tanakh, so we read it last. But the Ashkenazim read it in the exact opposite order. And I believe it's a Kabbalistic or or, or based on a Zohar uh, explanation or or maybe even that's the original way uh, that it's written in the in the uh, Seder Rabbi Amram. Uh, and I, the idea is that it ends with this idea that um, that God saves us um, through his righteousness. Uh, and that's the idea they want to end on. Uh, and, and the Sephardic Sidur decided, hey, that's out of order. Let's put it right back in order. So that's, that accounts for the difference. Now, before we talk about what this prayer is, let's listen to it uh, in the way that we sing it here in Sheretz Israel. And then we'll hear some other versions. Oops, I clicked on the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Sit got a rack a harder, Miss Pateka de Homeraba, a dam with my toshi and a donor. Let's see, got a hilo in that maroon. Sashirna sit and get a lot. Elohim and Mihamoha. Sit got a hat and glenolam. Now, in the synagogue, when we sing this, uh, it's also chanted first by the chazan and then by the congregation. So the chazan will say, And then he'll pause, and the congregation will say it. And the same thing with the next verse. And the third verse, the chazan will go, And then the congregation comes in, that's the way it is sung here in New York. Uh, very, very similarly, um, uh, we, it's sung in London uh, by Chalfon Ben Arosh. Here we have an example of it. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy that too. <laughs> So not perfectly the same, but uh, similar. Um, and now you'll hear uh, another version. This comes from um, Rabbi and Chazan Bruno Polacco, who was a uh, Chazan and a uh, rabbi in uh, in Venice, uh, or maybe in Florence, uh, and later in his life in Livorno. He died in like 1956 or 1957. Uh, so this is a historic recording of. I got this recording from the, the National Sound Archive at the Jewish National and University Library. Uh, it's available online. If you want to, you want the link, you can send me an email. I'll send you the link. A lot of other great recordings on this, uh, on that site. <laughs> That's the way the uh, the Italian Sephardim sing it. <coughs> okay, so what is this prayer? Uh, it's an it's it's talking about God, the righteousness of God. The three verses. The first verse is. Uh, Thy righteousness is as high as the mighty mountains, Kahare El, uh, and your judgments are as deep as the as the uh, deep ocean, 
and both man and beast, the Lord will save. The Lord saves. Then the second verse, Thy righteousness is as high as heaven, O God, for thou hast done great things. Asher asita gedolot, Elohim michamacha, who is like you? And then the last verse, Tidkat achat tzedek leolam, your righteousness lasts forever. The Torah techai meant, and your Torah, your teachings, are truth. Um, so these are three verses. Some of them uh, are known to us from other parts of the liturgy, namely something called Sidu Kadim, which is the uh, acknowledgement of the righteousness of God's decree that is recited by mourners when hearing uh, the loss of the hearing about the loss of someone at the funeral, at the burial, I should say. Um, and in our tradition during the week of Shiva. And that uh, Tzidu Kadin, uh, it doesn't have all the verses, so it has some of them. It has, uh, so, that, so it has the same idea though, um, that God is, God's decisions are right. Uh, and, you know, and we say that uh, at a funeral uh, because we have to acknowledge, you know, we don't know, why someone has a long life, someone has a hard life, someone has a short life, someone has a, a good life. We don't know why God makes the decisions he does and why someone has passed away before us, one of our loved ones. But nevertheless, uh, it is our duty to acknowledge that the Lord is right. And the, the Dayan Hamet, he is the true judge and his decisions are right and good and righteous. Tidu um, Kadim. That is uh, from the funeral service. So uh, these verses share something in common with them. And that is the reason that is given for these verses on Shabbat afternoon. What are you talking about? I don't know. Let's see what it says inside. Um, Sefer Abu Darham uh, from uh, Toledo, I believe, in the 14th century, 13th century. Um, is a book about the Minhagim of, uh, of Spain, as Abu, Abu Darham knew them. And he says, Vatam The reason we rate, we say these three verses, Katav Mar Sar Shalom, one of the Gaonim of Babylonia, Sar Shalom Gaon, writes, Kihu Tidu Kadin, this is the acknowledgement of the righteousness of God's decree, Al Shemet Moshe Rabbeinu Allah HaShalom B'Shabbat Mincha. Now we say these three verses because Moses, our fearless leader, our great, great leader, died on Shabbat afternoon, and so we are saying Tidkatecha as Tidu Kadin on Shabbat afternoon. Again, this makes perfect sense to everyone, correct? Now we can, that's it. Um, perfect, perfectly good explanation. Uh, I, I, I now understand why we say Tidu Kadin on Shabbat afternoon, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, as you can tell, I'm not so happy with this explanation because I don't understand why we would need to say it. Uh, we are not relatives of Moshe. He died a really long time ago. You know, you don't say Tzidu Kadin on the yard site uh, when someone passes away. You don't say Tzidu Kadin. You know, why, why do I need to say Tzidu Kadin every Shabbat afternoon for Moshe Rabbeinu? And worse than that, as is pointed out by uh, some of the other Rishonim, including the tour, um, we'll just read the first verse before we get on to the rest of it. Yesh midrashim shemokhim shalom meit v'otasha'ah. Moses didn't die on Shabbat afternoon. What are you talking about, Sar Shalom Gaon? Moses didn't die on Shabbat, and, and, and they prove it from Midrashim, they, uh, 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 which are also a little spotty and less than reliable. But if you work it out according to the, the tour and the rush and others, um, uh, and the uh, and and yeah, and and um, it comes out that Moses passed away on Friday, not on Shabbat afternoon. So this whole explanation of Tidu Kadin on Shabbat afternoon doesn't make any sense. So the tour gives the other explanation, which I think is more accurate or more uh, 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 on point, although it still doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But he says, uh, what are those people who, you know, who, who say that Moses didn't die in Shabbat afternoon? Why, why did they, according to them? Because of the Evil doers who return to uh, hell, uh, the, the place where punishment is meted out after, in the afterlife. Um, okay, done. Have a good day, everybody. I know you now you perfectly understand everything about this business. 
um, so I can go home. No, so what does that mean? So for this actually, uh, and this is a setup a little bit because I'm not gonna go into it fully here. We're gonna have another session about Kaddish. But in, uh, in uh, I'm not gonna say ancient, but in an, in an older, in a medieval period, maybe even in the Gaonic period, which I don't know exactly if that's yeah. late antiquity, early, early, uh, early medieval period, um, the beliefs about reward and punishment and what happens to your soul after death was that, um, and I say was, I mean, there are probably sources that would indicate it today also, although this is a developing area of philosophy in Judaism, and there are many different views of, of what happens after, after your soul after, uh, there's not a lot of sources that they're going on. So they're building on small things um, that uh, people are, need to be punished for their wrongdoings. And that takes place uh, over the first 11 months. No one, and only the, the most evil of uh, evildoers would have it any longer than that anyway. Um, but uh, and during the first 11 months, uh, and that takes place uh, after death. And so people, their relatives, and most, of, most particularly in the earliest understanding is the children of the deceased, pray for them for those 11 months to, uh, that their punishment should not be harsh, uh, but they only need those prayers on weekdays because on Shabbat and holidays, the deceased, do not get punished. And Gehinom takes a rest just like everybody else, and they're not punished. And so, according to this explanation, we are saying Tidukadin because we're acknowledging that our relatives who have, may have passed on uh, and are being punished in the world in the afterlife, their, their reprieve for Shabbat is coming to an end. Shabbat is coming to an end. And they're going to head back to their terrible fate, at least until their, uh, their punishments are over. Uh, and so we are sad by that. We have to say to do Kadin. Not the most satisfying explanation, but I think it's a little better than Moses is dying on Shabbat afternoon. Uh, and I'm going to leave you here with this because uh, this will fit in a very carefully and uh, uh, very closely with the minhag here at Sharath Israel having to do with Kaddish. I, we have a unique custom here in New York, in, in New York uh, and in other Spanish Portuguese congregations, but we hold on to it stronger here uh, than any other congregation in the whole world, as far as I can tell. And that is, we do not say Kaddish, mourners Kaddish. Uh, mourners do not recite Kaddish on Shabbat. They also don't recite Kaddish on holidays. They also don't recite Kaddish on Rosh Chodesh, um, on days when Tachanunim are not recited on holidays. And that is the same rule for the Tidu Kadin. You don't say Tidu Kadin on days when there are there holidays. And you don't say Tidu you don't say Tidkatecha on Shabbat afternoon on a day that is otherwise a holiday. Uh, meaning, of course, it's Shabbat, so we're saying it. But if it were, um, if Shabbat is going into Rosh Chodesh, if Shabbat is going into Sukkot, if Shabbat is going into Shavuot, you don't say Tzitkatecha, because the, the deceased are not going back for their punishment. They are still enjoying their respite. And so we don't need to say Tzidu Kadin, and we don't need to say Kaddish, because Kaddish also is a prayer said to ameliorate the soul of the deceased from their punishments in Gehino. That is the perfect explanation that you now understand perfectly. <laughs> we'll talk about it more when we talk about Kaddish. I'm gonna uh, uh, look at the chats here. Yes, thank you, Dina. Yeah, the, the Lily Safra passed away. Um, and so we, uh, we, will, we will remember her uh, and hope that she does not have long in the, uh, in the, in the Gehinom. She should go quickly to the, uh, to the good places. Uh, and, and, uh, and so we say to do Kadin for her. Okay, I'm going to end the recording here, and thank you all for joining, and uh, let's see.